Hey everybody, welcome to Astro Dad. Aaron here. First episode, first video ever for me, really. Um, wanted to take a minute to give you a brief history of me and how I came to this whole astrophotography astro thing. Uh, let's rewind 16 years ago. I just graduated from the University of Georgia and um, was just settling in back in the hometown and uh, was an avid outdoor photographer enthusiast, loved to do landscape stuff and, um, and especially night stuff. Not so much at the sky at the time, but you know, anything at night with, you know, just time lapse with vehicles going by with bridges, that sort of thing. Just getting cool time delay, time lapse stuff. That's what kind of got me going on that direction. But what really made that turn for me was uh, discovering this astrophotographer, Russell Croman. Um, incredible, incredible astrophotographer. And his, his stuff is still online even today. But I can remember seeing his images. And this is all stuff he did out of his backyard, even back in 2002, 2003. And, um, of course, he had, he had a very nice rig to do, uh, to get the results that he had, he had attained. Uh, I believe it was like a 14-inch Richie Cretien and a Paramount ME mount and other gear as well. Not beginner's gear, needless to say, but it still, that was uh, the influence. That was what planted the seed, the desire to pursue this. And um, man, I tell you, it, it was an experience I'll never forget. But um, unfortunately, due to other circumstances at the time and budget and uh, being in the city and not really knowing anything about light pollution filters and how you can use those uh, to image in the city, of course, I, I just kind of put that on the back burner. So fast forward 16, 15, 16 years later, um, takes us to a year ago, almost to the day, and uh, I just finally uh, made my way out of Columbus. We uh, moved to the outskirts here in a um, little bit darker skies and the opportunity to get some gear and start fiddling with this astrophotography thing um, presented itself and uh, I took advantage of it and went on full throttle. Um, <clears throat> so I'll be honest with you, it, with having a year's experience now coming into this, um, I had a hard time just trying to decide what kind of video I was gonna do here. Um, there's so much I've learned over this past year that's been vital to me getting good results. Um, it was kind of hard to decide where to start. So I figured I'd just start with my setup. You know, what, what did I start with? You know, what was the rig I started with? And um, the telescope, the first telescope I got was a six inch Comet Hunter by Explorer Scientific. It's a Maxitov Newtonian reflector uh, style telescope. And the mount that I use is the EQ6R Pro. But today we're going to focus more on the telescope itself, some of the features, uh, benefits of going with a uh, Maxitov Newtonian, um, and some of the challenges you face. Overall, uh, I think you'll find that it is a awesome choice. Um, the image results you can get are, are pretty awesome, especially for the price range. So from a budget standpoint, it really does make sense as a, I don't know if I'd say beginner scope, but at least a beginner to intermediate uh, telescope. So with that being said, let's go outside and I'll show you the scope. All right, here we have it. This is my Comet Hunter 6-inch Maxitov Newtonian telescope by Explore Scientific. The Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Give you a little closer look. And this jumbled mess down here is my dew heater controller and USB hub for connecting all my goodies into my system here. Full setup I'll show at a later time. Tell you a little bit about the Comet Hunter. It is a 
reflecting style, reflector style type telescope. Um, it does have a corrector plate, a Maxitov corrector plate on the front, which is what helps give it a really nice flat field free of coma, astigmatism, chromatic aberration, uh, very, very high quality image results with these type of scopes. Relatively easy to collimate, uh, not much different than a standard Newtonian. I've got a tail rad as my range finder on it. Yeah, this, this scope's been awesome. Um, it gives me a focal length of about 731 millimeter and the F ratio I believe is 4.9. So fairly wide, fast focal system. This was, this was my initial setup. This is what I got last year. And uh, I have added on to it since then. I do have a William Optics 71 GT uh, F5.9 that I'll show you at a later, in a later video. And I also have a TPO 8 inch RC on its way. So you may be wondering why in the world did I start with a Maxotom Newtonian? Why not go with a refractor like most uh, people recommend? Which I still recommend if you're brand new into this. Um, the simplicity of a refractor cuts out a lot of the headaches that you may deal with with other optical systems. So definitely a good start. But really, uh, this is not a whole lot different from a traditional Newtonian telescope, um, which has a secondary mirror here, primary mirror here. The only difference is this one has a corrector plate up in the front, as I showed you earlier. And aside from having to do some uh, collimation, uh, adjustment of the secondary and primary mirror on occasion, um, and I really don't have to do that a whole lot because it holds it very well. Otherwise, it's a, it's a very easy uh, to use and manageable system. No, no field flattener or reducer is required with this system due to the nature of its design. And very easy to adapt and connect a CCD camera, CBOS camera, or digital SLR to this telescope here. So uh, I've been very pleased with how uh, easy it was to use right out of the box. And uh, uh, if I had to do it all over again, I'd, I think I'd still go with the Max Top Newtonian. Or another awesome feature of this telescope is the fact that it has a carbon fiber tube. And the reason why that's important, besides it looks really freaking cool, is um, it helps it be more thermally stable. So uh, once your telescope reaches uh, thermal equilibrium cool down, which in most cases for me, because I keep it in the garage covered uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes or so, and I'm good to go, I'm ready to start imaging, it holds that temperature very well. So even as the night goes on and you're imaging um, with other systems where say with the rolled steel system with a schmidt cassegrain or uh, something like that, the temperature change can cause a difference in the focal plane. So you'd have to readjust focus, you know, after five, six, seven degree difference change, maybe less depending. But with this system, you don't have to worry about that. It, it, holds, uh, it holds very well thermally, it's very stable. So another really nice feature of this system. Now, in case you're wondering, what kind of images you can take with this kind of telescope. Here's a few samples of what I've done already.